I'm Andrew Marguette, one of the owners and curators here in Milwaukee, Oregon, at the Warfront Museum located in the United States. I'm going to focus today on American U.S. Army service uniforms of the Second World War. In particular, the Eisenhower jacket, or often referred to as the Ike jacket. Now, these are often overlooked. However, these are very important items because they often tell a story of the individual American soldier who wore this home at the end of the Second World War. During the Second World War, the Army had two styles of uniforms. The four-pocket serviceman's blouse, which was issued before the war and throughout the war. However, early in 1944, the U.S. Army adopted a new uniform to replace their four-pocket service blouse, which we call the Ike Jacket. The big major difference, it's only got two chest pockets and a short button-up waist on it. This was done to save on labor and production costs. When inspecting these Ike jackets, there's something that's universal to all of them. You want to open them up and look inside. They'll have internal buttons. They'll have a size marking here in the collar. This one's marked 40R. R is for regular. You'll also find them with S for short and L for long. Something very important to look for inside the pocket here will be the maker's tag. And it has a host of information, starting off with the stock number, the size of the uniform, once again, 40R, the maker of the uniform, and then two very important dates. One is the pattern date, the second is the date of manufacture of the garment itself. So you want to look for both dates. Um, also, if you're lucky, you'll often find the individual's name and or possibly his service number. It's a nine-digit number, but quite often that number is abbreviated to the last four numbers of the service number, which is also called the laundry number, and will sometimes have his initials in there. So these are very helpful when doing research on the item itself. One of the things when examining the Ike jacket is they're always very different in what's on them. Quite often you'll find different ranks and insignia, and one of the things to look for is they'll always have brass discs on the lapels. The right one will be U.S. for U.S. Army. The left one will signify what the soldier's function was in the Army. It could be artillery, air corps, armored, etc. And you'll see an insignia to match that. Sometimes on the lapels you will find regimental DIs or distinguished insignia, but not always. It depends on what unit the soldier belonged to. On his left shoulder will be the shoulder sleeve insignia. Now this is often a divisional patch, but it could also be a battalion all the way up through army and corps insignia. And generally on each sleeve will be a rank, but not always. Now down here on the lower left sleeve, if they served overseas, they will have a horizontal gold hash mark. Each horizontal gold hash mark signifies six months overseas. So in this one we see two, that means one year overseas. So it's important to count the hash marks to tell how long they were overseas. The diagonal hash mark signifies three years of service in the Army. Now generally on the Ike jacket, if there are awards, they'll be over the left pocket here. And if you look, there'll be a ribbon. And each ribbon signifies a medal. And each of these awards requires further research and will tell you more about where that soldier served and what they were awarded. Generally, during the Second World War, the average soldier received three to four ribbons for his service during the war. Quite often on these uniforms, you'll find an insignia above the right breast pocket. Now, this is referred to often as the ruptured duck. And this insignia was placed on the uniform once the soldier was honorably discharged from the military and it signified that he was allowed to transit home. This allowed him to be free of any harassment from the military police or military authorities. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on Ike Jackets of the Second World War and took away the fact that these are individual items that belong to soldiers who sacrificed and served in the Second World War and that they tell important stories. So if you have any questions about our museum or items in the museum, please feel free to contact us.